You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And in coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah the prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we read by a little error at the reading from Jeremiah, our oversight. And my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God, as the psalm. And this reflects our thirst for life. And also how Jeremiah is drawn in by the personal love of God. You duped me, and I let myself be duped. The readings we had assigned were from Deuteronomy, and it's amazing how well they match. And that shouldn't be too much of a surprise because it's the same human being and it's the same God speaking to us for our salvation. And the subject of all of the readings today is about the law of God. And if we just focus on the law, we would miss the point because the law doesn't stand by itself. It's the human being. So it's the Jeremiah that's duped by the Lord, that's called in. It's our hearts that are thirsting for God. And so we have that very existential reality, and then we have the laws that seem maybe to hem us in, to, to uh, control us, to cut off expressions. Some people think, do what you feel. It's okay, it's good, whatever you feel like, do it. And actually, the gospel speaks a very strong word about that today. You know, uh, Maybe you have seen something beautiful another person has. And there's nobody around, there's nobody looking, nobody will know you did it, and you take it. Because you like to have it. A matter of clothing, a pen, a charging cable. <laughs> Do not steal. The law of God is not just protecting the property of the other, it's actually protecting my heart for becoming inhuman, for becoming untrue to ourselves. Or we take another case where 
uh, somebody has accomplished something very beautifully, and we are filled with envy. Where does the envy come from? It doesn't come from that person. It comes from inside my heart. And the same thing we could say about revenge, about anger against people. That's inside my heart. Okay, there might be injustice done to me, and that comes from the outside, but inside my heart, how do I process it? And there's a big challenge for the human being. First of all, there's the interior human life, but there's also a social life. So because stealing is a problem, then there are laws in the society to control it. Even parents teach their little children, you don't take that, that's your sister's pen. That's, this place is for your brother, don't touch it. And so there are little laws, little rules parents make, and from the very beginning of life, children start learning that there are things you do and things you don't do, and there are laws and there are punishments. And otherwise, there would be disorder in the home, and the lawgivers are the parents. But why do the parents give laws just to show that they're the boss? No, they love the child, <laughs> and they want the child to become a decent human being and to grow up. But sometimes we can become paralyzed by laws. And we have that in our modern democracies very much. We have incredible uh, law giving that controls everything. And there's always a case I remember very much. Uh, and in Germany, there was a big study or done once or a reflection. Why, how come that all the major worldwide corporations prim primarily start in America and not in Germany? And the conclusion was very simple. There was so much regulation, so many standards, that anybody, any entrepreneur starting a company had to deal with, he was paralyzed, he couldn't start a company because it was so structured, so controlled. And obviously the laws are made because to curtail something bad that happened. So we make a law about immigration, uh, we make a law about uh, drugs. There were no laws about drugs before because there wasn't a big problem with drugs. And now there are laws about pornography on the internet. There were, those laws didn't exist when I was a child because first of all there was no internet and secondly there wasn't pornography on the internet. So then there's a development of laws <coughs> and there's a change in society. The most famous one is the, about the law of usury, that you shouldn't charge interest because you would exploit the need of somebody that urgently needed a loan and if you were to charge interest you would bleed them. You would take away their life strength. And so usury was forbidden, but then later with the development of banking and so forth, then it became, even the time of Jesus, he talks about interest. You could have invested m the money in a bank and you could get interest, so that means in the Roman Empire, there was a structure of capital and investment and interest. So different laws change and develop in certain things, but there are basic core things that are essential. And the big message today of the readings is that we need to focus on the essential. And sometimes we get very hung up inside the church as well about the liturgy. Some people get very tense and angry about certain aspects of the liturgy. But the main things, for example, when you bring your gift to the altar and there you remember somebody has something against you, go and reconcile with your brother or sister before you bring your gift. And that's more essential than how many candles or different things like that to have that reconciliation. One of the fascinating things that really uh, gets my attention is how the Old Testament presentation of religious life centers around social justice. And that's why all the prophets cry out and they even put the responsibility for the exile on those who are unjust within their own society. The goodness, the kindness, all of the laws are even the Sabbath, Jesus said, the Sabbath is for man, not man for the Sabbath. So this is the correction Jesus is bringing today, and here we have it summarized in the letter of St. James, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction. This is pure religion, religion that is pure. Charity is the core of worship. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.